Hello friends and welcome back to another JDBC video tutorial. In this episode, we're going to explore the JDBC statement object. In JDBC, a statement is an object that defines the methods and properties that allow us to send commands to and to retrieve data from a database. Step number one, if you recall from our previous video, is to get a connection to the database. So that's the starting point of our current project. Once we have a connection, we can use the connection to create a statement. So first I'll create a variable for our statement. Statement, statement equals null. And in our program, statement equals connection dot create statement. Now that we have a statement object, we can use that statement object to execute some SQL code against our database. The statement object has three different methods that we can use to execute SQL against the database, and choosing which one to use depends on the type of SQL that we're going to execute. The first one that I'm going to show you is some data definition language, or DDL. In this case, we're going to create a new table in the database. So DDL refers to creating a definition for something. We'll create uh, a new table. We'll create a new index. We'll modify an existing table. We'll add a new column to an existing table. Things like that that affect the structure of the database as opposed to the data that is in the tables in the database. So version number one is data definition language, and the method that you use to execute the DDL SQL code is execute. The execute method expects a string which contains the SQL code. Here I've created a SQL statement that will create a table. Let's just quickly go through it. Let's just give ourselves some more room. I'll maximize our editor window. So the SQL is create table if not exists, users. So the name of the table is users, and this SQL is expected to create the table if it doesn't already exist in the database. If it does exist, the table will not be overwritten and recreated. Next, we define the columns in the table. I have a column ID, which is an integer. It cannot be null, and it's an auto increment field, meaning that we don't have to specify a value when we create new records for this particular table. MariaDB will take care of auto incrementing a value and inserting it into the database record for us. The next field we have is a user ID, and it's a variable character field, the maximum length of 30. It also cannot be null. And we have a primary key for the table, which is our auto incrementing ID field, and a unique key, which is the user ID. ID field. So each record we enter into the table has to have a unique user ID. Now that we've created our SQL command, we can use that in our execute method. So the method is statement dot execute SQL or SQL. And then all that remains after executing the SQL against the database is to clean up our resources. So we need to close the statement object. And as we learned in the last episode, we also need to close the connection object. Now I've added a couple of new methods to the database class. And those methods are simply convenience methods. In addition to our get connection, it allows us to close a connection without specifying this try catch block in our code every time we want to do that. And the same with the close statement and I also have a close result set. So we'll make use of those in our main method in the finally clause. And we have to close these in reverse order. So we created the connection first and then the statement. When we actually close them, we close in reverse order, close the statement, and then the connection. So database dot close statement statement and I'm going to use Heidi SQL the database administration tool that's installed with MariaDB so let's open it up MariaDB is installed as a local database server we have some parameters here that allow us to log in so I'm just going to open and I have an existing database called Tutorial you'll see that there are two tables departments and employees and I have four different views 
We're not going to worry about that at this point, but what we're going to do is use our Java program that we just wrote to create the user's table and then we're going to verify it in Heidi SQL. So let's go back to our Eclipse IDE. We'll now right click on main, run as Java application, and our program executed successfully. There were no errors. Now let's go back to Heidi SQL. We'll refresh, right click, refresh on our database, and now we have a users table. And the users table is, as we specified, two fields, ID and user ID, an auto increment field for the ID, and if we look at the contents under the data tab, we currently do not have any records. So that's the first type of SQL that we can execute against the database using the execute method. Let's look at the second type of SQL command that we can execute against our database. I'm just going to comment these lines. We're going to use the same program for the second and third types of SQL. We're just going to reuse what we've already created. So highlight and control and seven in the IDE. We'll comment those lines. The second type of SQL that we can run against the database is called DML or data manipulation language. This actually refers to the contents or the records in the database. I'm going to show you an example of DML that allows us to insert records into a database and the corresponding version of the execute command that we use to do that. Once again, we'll set up our SQL command string SQL equals, and this one is insert into the table that we just created, users. We specify the fields or columns that we're going to provide data for. We only have one other than the auto increment, which we don't specify a value for. So we'll specify user ID as it was defined in our previous SQL. And now we specify a value for the user ID. Values and in brackets, Elvis123. Close bracket. And now we use the execute update to run this against the database. So statement dot execute update SQL. We right click run as Java application. No errors. So now we can just go to Heidi SQL and verify that this record now exists in our database table. So we'll right click and refresh and you'll see the record now exists with an ID number one. That is the first auto increment value for this table and the user ID of Elvis123. If we go back to our program and we add in another one, call it Santa369, run it again, run as Java application. Go back to Heidi SQL, refresh, we'll now have two records. So that's the second type of SQL that we can use in a statement object. The third and arguably the most complex of the different types of SQL that we can use in a statement object is also data manipulation language. This data manipulation language uh, is for SQL that actually returns a result set. Don't worry too much about the result set. We'll cover that in a separate video, but for right now, we'll just introduce the result set briefly so that we can fully cover the third type of SQL that we are going to process against the database. So this is also data manipulation language, but it allows us to retrieve records from the database. So let's go back to our program in the IDE. We're again going to comment out our second type with highlight and control seven. We'll now set up SQL for the third type. So string SQL equals select star, which means all columns from, and then the table name, which is users. So this version of a select statement will get all of the records from a database table. We'll then use the third and final execute method to retrieve those records. So the method is statement dot execute query, specifying the SQL command that we just created. If you hover over the execute query, you'll see that it returns a result set object so I'm going to create and specify a result set so that we can capture the return value from the execute query method. We'll 
organize our imports, and now we can process the records that are returned in the result set in a loop. So while result set dot next, and I'll just do uh, some output to the system console. Sys out result set dot get string and we'll specify the column label or the name of the column which is user ID. So this will get the value from each record that's returned in the result set and output the value to the system console. So let's run that and see what we get. We should get the two records that we entered into the table. Run as Java application and there we are. We get Elvis123, which was our first record, and Santa369, which is our second and final record. For those of you who may be interested, I'll post a copy of this project code on GitHub, and I'll leave a link in the video description below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and consider subscribing so that you don't miss any content when I release new videos. I appreciate you hanging out with me today, as always, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.